Hi, I'd like to talk to you about herbal energetics. You may have heard herbal energetics and kind of wondered what that means. It's a lot simpler than you're probably imagining. Herbal energetics generally mean, is it hot? Is it cold? Is it dry? Or is it wet? That's about it. It basically just is asking, is this herb going to have a warming or a hot effect on the body? In Ayurveda, there is only hot and cold and no neutral. In Chinese medicine, there is a neutral and there is a warm and there is a hot and there is cool and there is cold. And then as far as the um, the moisture goes, there is damp and there is dry. So you can have damp heat, for example, in Chinese medicine. Damp heat can be inflammation because inflammation is heat. And it's also swelling up, generally speaking. There's, inflammation can mean slightly different things in different, case, different situations. But generally speaking, inflammation is swelling with redness, which indicates heat. So the heat is binding with the water, and there you go. Damp heat. Um... That's an example from Chinese medicine. An example from Ayurveda would be vata dosha, if you know what that means. It's someone who is dry and cold and skinny and usually doesn't have the best digestive system. So these people are going to be cold and dry for example, and so that would be the energetics. This can also apply to elements. For example, the element of water is going to be cold and wet, obviously. The element of fire is going to be hot and dry. If you know anything about Ayurveda, Pitta Dosha is a combination of those two. So it's dry from the heat, but then it's also wet from the water. And so that seems like a contradiction. But when you think about it, if someone was to be completely fire, you would kind of burn out, so to say, and you wouldn't really be able to exist for very long. So that's why Ayurveda pairs fire with water, because the fire would burn itself out, theoretically, according to the Ayurveda. And so in order for someone to exist in that state, there has to be some water in their system. And generally, people who tend to be really hot in nature they tend to drink a lot of water. For example, you go run a marathon, you're naturally going to want to drink more water. And if you don't, well, you might die. One more thing about energetics in terms of temperature is that when an herb is, is hot or warming, it doesn't necessarily mean that when you eat the herb, it's going to have a pungent flavor, which is generally associated with heat. Generally, there are tastes as well associated with all these different factors. But just because an herb is hot or warming does not mean that the body itself is going to heat up. Literally, it can, and many times it will, whether that be an immediate effect or a long-term effect, like an accumulative effect. If you were to take the herb every day for months, you might have 
a month or you might have months of that and then it may have a lingering effect that lasts further like say you do it for two months you would build up to that point for two months then you may have it for four months or six months or it all depends on the person so it's not about the the literal temperature though so a great example I like to use to describe this is that if you had someone who is really hot in nature, energetically hot, and you had someone who is cold in nature, energetically speaking, and you had them next to each other, and then you were to bring them into a hot room, the person with the hot energetics is going to show manifestations of heat in their body. And what that would be is a very simple, obvious one is redness. And also their body temperature will heat up faster than the person with the cold energetics. So it does apply to some extent, but it doesn't necessarily mean that somebody is going to be hot all the time. Their body temperature could be the same. But when they are exposed to heating environments or substances, their body temperature is going to react quicker than someone who is either neutral or cold energetically. So there are lots of different signs of heat. Um, uh, one sign is actually irritability. That would be excess heat. Heat is um, also important to have in the digestive system because in Ayurveda, Pitta dosha, which is the dosha of that has fire element in it, it lives in the small intestine. And also Agni is the element of metabolism, which is also part of digestion. And so you want that to be hot. They call it the digestive fire in Ayurveda. So you want some heat in your digestive tract in order to break down the food. Um, you don't want that heat to spread out of the digestive tract. You don't want excess heat in the liver. The liver is a hot organ by nature, but the liver also has a tendency to overheat. And this is more so from Chinese medicine, although Ayurveda would agree too, but the liver heats up very rapidly and it can cause the heat to go out of the liver even into the heart and that can be really bad but also just up and out into the brain and it can cause issues with the head area your ears your eyes it can cause you to go bald and it can even be associated with insanity and schizophrenia and things like that. Um, personally, I've dealt with this, and it's actually been one of the main reasons why I had insomnia. And I tried all sorts of herbs that were supposed to help with insomnia, but it turned out that the real reason why I wasn't sleeping was because my energetics were too hot, and I needed to calm down and cool down. So anyways, I'm not trying to make this video too long. I just wanted to do a basic outline so that you could kind of wrap your mind around what energetics mean because they're commonly misunderstood. It's very simple. Is it hot? Is it cold? Is it dry? Is it wet? Those are the four basic energetics of herbs. My name is Tyson Spring. If you'd like to learn more, you can check out my website. I'm a clinical herbalist. My website is herblife.site, no www, just simply herblife.site. Thank you for your time.